Hey, what's up, guys? So for those of you who don't know, Elden Ring, PvP. PvP is confirmed in Elden Ring. Invasions are confirmed in Elden Ring. In uh, some recent interviews, in Japanese and in Russian as well, Miyazaki has confirmed himself the existence of both PvP and invasions in, a dark, in uh, Elden Ring. And lucky us, we also got some combat information. So today we're going to take a look a deeper look at the combat changes that are in Elden Ring and how they're going to affect PvP. And uh, to do that, we're going to use Dark Souls 3 as a basis. So for those of you who don't know, I'm going to make a you know story short here. Uh, for those of you who want the full story, please go check out the latest vid we did uh, yesterday about the topic. <clears throat> so pretty much in the latest IGN article, uh, Miyazaki talks about how in Elden Ring there is going to be a some sort of ability slash weapon art system where you can uh, pick and choose a weapon art and give it to certain weapons so weapons are not tied to their weapon arts anymore like in Dark Souls 3 for instance you're going to be able to take a weapon art change it put it on another weapon and pretty much customize the moveset of your weapon this way which is a huge deal <clears throat> And so today we're going to take a look at some of the possibilities that this could open up. We know so far that in the Elden Ring trailer, uh, Elden Ring uses a lot of Dark Souls 3 assets. Some of the weapon movesets are taken straight from Dark Souls 3, pretty much copy and pasted, and that's great. Um, but that also leaves us with a fair assumption that we're going to see some weapon arts that are in Dark Souls 3 mix and matched with some move sets that are also in Dark Souls 3, but maybe those are not necessarily together. So what I mean by that, we're, we might see something like a, I don't know, imagine a Goddard straight sword with a Gale weapon art, you know, why not? Stuff like this. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do this fun little exercise as to uh, what we, what kind of weapon art we want to mix with which kind of weapons. Let's take a look at some of the possible mix and matchups between different weapon arts and different weapons. All right, so let's look at this real quick. Okay, so in the um, Elden Ring trailer, let's just pull the Elden Ring trailer up real quick. In the Elden Ring trailer, we do see um, the Wolf Knight Curved Greatsword weapon art. And uh, we kind of assume that the weapon was tied to, um, to the weapon art there. Like we thought it was like say a reskin of the Wolf Knight Greatsword. But... Now that we know that weapon arts are interchangeable, we might start looking at that trailer in a different eye. It's here, yeah, here, right there. Let's pull that up. Normal speed, nope. Right, there you go. So, like, say here, for instance, you see that, that animation right there? Well, this is the Wolf Knight. Curved Greatsword weapon art, right? Curved Greatsword from Dark Souls 3. But, now that we know that it's not necessarily tied to this specific weapon, for instance, we can only imagine which weapon would benefit from such a weapon art like this. And, uh, as a rule of thumb, um, as far, like, this is really the, the same thought process that you go through when you think about um, hard swaps, you know, weapon swapping in combat in Dark Souls 3. Like, what you want to look forward to or look for, um, not look forward, but what you want to look for in a weapon swap is to have the the swap you're going to um, take care of a weakness of, like, a weakness that set a weapon has. Like, for instance, um, if you're going from a slow weapon that has eye armor, you basically want to go and swap to something that has a fast roll catch to surprise your opponent. 
if you're going from a short weapon you want to go into a long weapon but the opposite does not necessarily work so if you go from a spear to let's say a dagger uh, maybe the uh, the tracking here might you know help a little bit but uh, for the most part uh, people are gonna be maybe not spear to dagger but let's say spear to straight sword because spear to da dagger is always a good swap in dark souls 3 because it's pretty much the fastest option but let's say you go from a spear to to a straight sword let's say you, you swap your spear to a straight sword the only thing you're gaining by doing that is the tracking and the tracking is something that you can already have if you unlock your attack so even if someone is going around you you can still unlock your spear and hit the tar hit the target so there is very little incentive to switch from a spear to a straight sword for instance because you're not getting any more range the person when you when you're fighting um with a spear your opponent is already respecting the spear range so they're going to be staying outside of the spear range so what happens when you switch to a straight sword well nothing happens really because you're still outside of the range but but if you say have a um uh if you have a very short uh, weapon to start with and you switch to a spear so let's say you have a dagger for instance or even let's give it some of the shorter straight swords um let's say the broadsword you know broadsword i think is a good example because broadsword does a lot of uh, a lot of damage probably i think the highest damage you can get from an r1 on a straight sword i believe and why would the broadsword be say a better for a spear swap than a goddard well it's because the the goddard is going to force your opponent to respect your range Whereas the broadsword has a lot less range, it's less significant. So if you start from a broadsword and you switch to a spear, um, you're going to get a lot more range and the opponent is should be in the range of the spear when you do the swap. So you're effectively going for a surprise attack while the opponent was not in range and you're making the attack be in range when you swap to the spear. So the idea... When you're swapping to say broadsword into spear would be to gain some range right so the idea with switching weapons is always to gain something to surprise your opponent to gain something your weapon lacks so here why is there no point to switch from goddard to spear well it's because the goddard's already long enough maybe you're gonna get a you know a bit more range with the the running attack but the goddard is already a top weapon right so the incentive to switch from goddard to another weapon that has range is much less significant you don't really need to swap because there's no range deficit deficiency here whereas a short weapon would take advantage of it so that's one thing going from short range to long range so if we think about weapon arts that have a lot of range and weapons that have short range we could imagine some weapon arts being useful in elden ring right so there's that uh, we can figure that out after let's talk about what other options or ideas there would be to give a you know a good weapon art to a weapon well we talked about range let's talk about speed going from a slow weapon to a fast weapon that's a very obvious one so this this is probably going to be the go-to if um if we get the ability to to mismatch and mix around any weapon arts i'm sure a lot of people will pick up some of the slower weapon and try to strap on it the fastest weapon art possible and that would be a very logical thing to do obviously or even maybe take one of the slowest weapon and strap a weapon art that's not necessarily the fastest but let's say that's uh, a weapon art that's very good at roll catching so right now i'm thinking of say the follower saber is a very good example you know the weapon art from the follower saber is not necessarily the fastest but because it hits multiple times and it has decent tracking uh you know a follower saber type weapon art would suit an ultra class very very well and would be very deadly so that is another one 
Also, for weapons that are already fast, like, uh, you know, decently fast straight sword, curved sword, daggers, uh, trusting swords, which kind of weapon art would suit them? Uh, it's Ipe Armor. Well, we don't know how Ipe Armor is going to work in Elden Ring, but uh, at the very minimum, trading for high damage is always something to look for. Although, actually, I say there's no Ipe Armor in Elden Ring. Let's just take a look at that little part real quick. Okay, you do not, the the person here doesn't get hit while he's doing the, the attack, but uh, let's just assume for argument's sake that, you know, the upper armor is going to work similarly, um, just because it's going to be easier to do that exercise, and it's only for fun really anyway, but uh, speaking of Dark Souls 3 again, another good option for swaps is going from a weapon that does not have an upper armor, armor option, to an attack that has hyper armor option. So let me give you another example here. Going from a dagger into a Gundir swap. Now that is extremely deadly and um, that sort of swap is really as strong as it gets because you have a weapon that's first in its class right there. One of the, one of the best, one of the fastest weapon. And then you switch to something that has hyper armor. Um, I remember that comes out fast and does a lot of damage. So you surprise, you're, you surprise your opponent with some very fast damage. All right, so you guys tell me what you think about all of this. Would, is there a particular weapon and weapon art combination you would like to see in Elden Ring? Let's get the discussion going. Let's, uh, let's speculate. Let's have fun. This is just a fun little exercise anyway. Um, I hope you guys like this vid and uh, take it easy, guys. See you next time.